gosh. Okay, this is my sister's cat, Blue. He kept me up all last night. <laughs> I think he's crazy. Jasmine again and welcome to the best day of my life as you can see I am NOT in my normal setup can you guess where I am five four three two one okay I'm back in the States if you guys follow me on patreon you know that I had to return abruptly for a family emergency everything is kind of quieting down right now uh, so that's why I'm able to make a video and update you guys on what's been happening so that's pretty much like that's the update uh, anyway I wanted this video to be more than just like like depressing stuff. So I wanted to share with you guys something that has been happening since I returned back to the US. Since I landed from like the plane and everything, I've been recording all of the things that are strange to me. What is this cat doing? It's really creepy how this cat sometimes it just like randomly stares at the wall, like there's something there, it, like randomly stares in a certain direction, uh, like something is there. Oh, by the way, so my sister has two cats and one dog. This is Ali, I don't know if you guys can see him. Ali, look, 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 look. Look! Uh, 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 look! Uh. Okay, you guys. Look. This is Ali. Say hi, Ali. Is he cute? He's gonna be a star. <laughs> he has like such a personality, and so does that cat over there. Since I landed, no, since getting on the plane, I have been having like some severe reverse culture shock moments. And luckily for you, I've been recording along the way. I hope you guys can hear me. Right now, I just made it back to the US. I am at the airport in San Francisco. You see? This is my first time in San Francisco. I am having somewhat of like a culture shock already. My entire flight, I was sitting next to this like Dutch guy who like spent 20 years in the US, in New Jersey, and like, He's like so friendly and we're just having like a really good conversation and yeah already like I asked for help here and just like people are so friendly and I kind of miss that um, living in Japan. So right now I'm gonna try to find my terminal and then or maybe I should get some food first and then find my terminal. But I'm like in the airport right now. I am like in a food court. Instead of like doing like the connecting flight route, I went outside of the airport, came back, and I didn't know how to get to my terminal. I, I still don't really know how to get to my terminal. So I asked for directions, and the lady was just like super friendly and super sweet. Like the service in Japan, like they're really kind and everything, but she was more warm. And in Japan, like the people, like they're really friendly, they're really sweet, they like go above and beyond to help you. But she seemed like she can be like my grandma or something like that. And it was like a simple interaction. I'm just like, excuse me, can you uh, show me how I can get to uh, like where I should go? <laughs> and I gave her my ticket. She's just like, sure, honey, can you wait right here? And uh, let me look it up on the computer for you. And it was just like so kind and so sweet. And it was like the simple, like the shortest interaction. But right now, I am really hungry. Although I'm hungry, I cannot decide. Like, I'm hungry, but at the same time, I don't want to eat because like, I feel bombarded with options and right here this little food court there's only three options there I pass like other food courts too um, that had like Chinese food and Wendy's but like I feel like so happy right now that I want to eat everything at the same time I don't feel hungry because I'm just like I feel such like anxiety or something not anxiety I don't know but I'm just like I don't know if you guys have ever had this feeling it's just like you want something so bad and you're so happy that although you have like um, bio needs like uh, to eat or whatever like you can't bring yourself to do it so I'm gonna try to eat I don't even I seriously don't think I can do it because uh, I'm so happy right now in the end I didn't eat at the other uh, food court I just found my gate because I my like my nerves are really shot and I'm just like I don't know what to choose and yeah I was too excited. Um, anyway, I found my terminal. I'm in the gate. I found like a bun me like Vietnamese sandwich place. I wanted to show you guys like talk tell you guys like more um, uh, like reverse culture shock things that have happened. I wanted to say it before but I forgot because I was like really overwhelmed. I don't know if you guys can tell like how overwhelmed I am. My glasses are like really dirty. 
um, but yeah, I feel like really overwhelmed. The other thing that I noticed before was that in all of the stores, so there's like stores everywhere, it's an airport, um, all of the co-workers are talking to each other. In Japan and Tokyo, like, you'll see if you, like, if you walk by stores and everything, you'll see the, the employees just standing at the, like, at the entrance or standing around the store, and they're just like stoic, they're not moving, they're not talking or anything, but here, Almost every store I, I go past, you'll see the, the employees, they're like talking to themselves. Even like the TSA agents, they're like talking and they're laughing and everything. And it was just like, whoa, wow. Another thing I noticed is that when I first like got out of the gate, I saw I would see black people and like in Tokyo, like in Japan, in Peru, like when you're abroad, when you see black people, it's like, I feel like, I feel kind of like weird saying it out loud, guys. <laughs> but like, yeah, you, you guys know, like you do like the little nod thing and you just like, look, catch eye contact, smile, whatever. Um, so I did that and nothing happened because uh, I see like so many black people here. Why do I feel like kind of weird saying it? I guess because there's like black people around me right now. But <laughs> yeah, it's like really odd because like I would see like black people and I would like look at them and like smile and then like nothing happens. Like they just like turn their head or whatever. They don't even stare that long or look at me long enough for me to like really like show them a smile or anything. That's really odd. And I'm like catching myself doing all of these things and I'm realizing how much Japan has had an influence on me. And it's kind of like, it's so weird because this is my culture. The other thing that I noticed that kind of annoyed me is after I got my sandwich, they didn't have any uh, hand wipes because in Japan, every time you eat somewhere at a restaurant or something like that, there are always like those hand wipes or like a towel or something to wash your hands. So I'm a little bit frustrated that there's no hand towels. But I remember like before I left, there were no hand towels either. I think I'm all caught up with all of my reverse culture shock um, things to happen. I really hope that I'm conveying like how awkward I feel and like the anxiety that I have. I'm really happy that I found this because like I really wanted the Chinese food and I wanted the Mexican food and I wanted a sandwich so I'm so glad I found this because this kind of like calmed my nerves a little bit. I really think I should get a drink to like calm down. Most of my reverse culture shock comes about when I'm going to a restaurant, when I'm like interacting with anyone outside of my family because I think living with my sister and then seeing my family every single day, I think I have adjusted really well with like my family and stuff. Like just like sometimes I like a Japanese word may come out because I feel like Japanese, like as in many languages, Japanese has words that English doesn't have words for and English has words that Japanese doesn't have words for. So sometimes when I'm like surprised about something, like I all say like eh or something like that. Me, my sister and my sister's fiance, we went to this really nice restaurant. We split the check half and half. So I paid half cash and my sister and fiance, they paid the other half and they paid with a card and then after my sister, my sister was charged first and then uh, it was my turn and I paid with cash and then I'm just like ready to go and my sister's just like, did you tip? I'm like, oh, oh, I forgot, I completely forgot to tip. So I have to be like, I have to be made aware about tipping. Anyway, but I'm really curious as to how my family and my friends think uh, that I've changed or how they, yeah, how they think I've changed and what they think about it. So I am at my sister's house, so let's ask her. So this is my older sister Jade. This is her place that I'm staying at. Jade, I'm really curious as to how do you, like, okay, so can you explain to them how was I before? And like, how do you think I changed after living in Japan for three years? Well, I think that you have always been a motivated person. And um, oh, don't suck you, up, don't suck up. I was like sucking up, this okay. is good, and then you give the back. And I think that you were a motivated person, but I think that you were also timid and a little, um, not as confident as you exude it right now. No, 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 just like personality wise. So like, that is a personality. No. So I think like that mannerisms. So I think that once you moved to Japan and did your, you know, your adventures, I think that I definitely see more confidence, the more sternness in you, who you are and following your truth and you know, making sure you live up to your best self and I really like that. You're sucking up to me. I'm not sucking up. Okay, but like, how about like speaking and like mannerisms, or like, do I carry myself differently, or like, do I interact? You definitely with carry you yourself differently. Definitely carry yourself differently. So how? Okay. It's weird. Like, I don't. I mean, you're not really like Americanized anymore. <laughs> In a lot of ways, which is okay. Um, but let's say, for instance, for tipping, you know, you 
you were telling me that <laughs> you don't really tip over there in Japan because that's the culture, but here we have to tip, so I had to remind her, hey. You had to remind me at at a little tip. <laughs> at waters and for my eyebrows. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah. And as far as, you know, eating, you wanna make sure that your hands are always clean, that they're, you know, I guess because of the culture in Japan, they give you the, the towels to wash your hands or wipe your hands before you eat. And so I noticed that too at lunch. <laughs> she was kind of like moving her hands like this, like I need to wash my hands, I need to wash my hands. Which you should always wash your hands before you eat. I mean, that's a, that's a rule. Life rules. Yes. Hashtag like rules. You do speak with an accent. You do tend to break off into like a different language. There's been times that she has spoken to me <laughs> and I'm like, what in the world is she telling me right now? And then she realized, oh, speaking Japanese. <laughs> It's like little subtle changes, nothing too drastic, I would say. You definitely have become more accustomed to the culture there in Japan than here, which okay. is natural. When you come to Japan, what is the first thing you want to see? There's so much I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or like, okay, yeah, no, no, what's the first thing you want to see? I want to see where you live. <laughs> I'm pretty sure these people want to see where I live too. <laughs> But I get to see it, I get the VIP pass. <laughs> um, and then, I really want to go to some, um, I, I'm not gonna say like I know names and everything, but I have seen pictures, mm -hmm. but I do want to go see the cherry blossoms. Yeah. Cherry blossoms indeed. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, indeed. cherry blossoms. And then I want to see the forest, the bamboo forest. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> Oh, after, after like the Logan Paul thing, I'm just like, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I caught on very quickly. Yeah. Once I saw your face. So I'm like, why would you want to? Okay. Yeah. So the forest, like the um, bamboo forest. I do want to see. Isn't there like a field of like flowers, like purple trees? <laughs> I thought there was like a field of like flowers or like um, like purple flowers or something that was there. Oh, yeah. So I just want to like go there and just like, well I guess I can't run around in the flowers, but. You can try, just run really fast <laughs> when the police come. And then, you know, there are some, oh, statues. Buddha? Mm, yeah, okay. Buddha statues. And um, just some scenic. I just want to be like in the in the environment, in the nature, in the mountains, and the woods and something. Just be in the. <laughs> <laughs> just to be out in nature. I love to like experience different cultures and different um, countries, like their environments, their habitats. I love to go to the zoo. I want to go to the zoo. Okay, we're going to Ueno Zoo. And the aquarium. Okay. Definitely aquarium. And yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I think my next video will be will take place in the US too. If not, I will upload a video that I made before I left because I really have to upload those. But thank you so much for watching. Say goodbye to my little or my older sister, older sister. Ciao. <laughs> See ya. Oh. See ya. Bye bye. Oh, don't forget to subscribe, like, visit my Facebook, and follow me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again next time. Bye bye. See ya.